Good morning. I think everybody here knows me, but I'll say that I'm Diane Peterson, just in case there's somebody that doesn't. Um, our Pastor Lee is on vacation and will be back next Sunday. So today is all about play and joy. I meant to uh, grab one of my grandkids' jump ropes and forgot, so we get stretch bands. <laughs> Play and joy, both inextricably tied together and very much needed in our lives. Right now, we need to play and find joy to get through the struggles, the chaos, the hurting in the larger world and in our personal worlds. About a month ago, I wrote a poem based on a prompt of writing about someone else I'd like to be. It's called Longing. Alone on the dance floor, being carried by the beat, she floats gracefully, giving herself over. The music and Aza become one. I long to lose myself, not care about what others see, be in the moment and let the music take me away, become aza like but I can't or just don't a bit too vulnerable on the dance floor. Instead, I let words move me, not always gracefully, but yet I am carried away. Lost in the waves of words, I long to become one with them and write something beautiful. After I wrote the poem, I thought of how it ended up becoming something I didn't expect. It turned into a poem about how I have turned longing to dance free into a different way to embody play and joy. I write. Also, after I wrote the poem, all of a sudden, this amazing blast of different serendipitous dance things kept popping into my life. It was crazy. So I was like, OK, this is a sign. It's time to do another service and include something about dance. So before we begin, let's take a few deep breaths and prepare to dance our way into play and joy. And before I go, I forgot to say welcome to those online. Sorry about that. I love that you're here. <laughs> All right, Beth. And I'll be the reader this morning. Let us join together in the call to worship. Play and joy go together like peanut butter and jelly and Bert and Ernie. Today we celebrate this dynamic duo. Because this duo is essential in our lives. Also. Even when life is hard, when chaos surrounds us, when things seem insurmountable. For our first reading this morning, it is from Brene Brown. It's called The Gifts of Imperfection. Laughter, song, and dance create emotional and spiritual connection. They remind us of one thing, that truly matters when we are searching for comfort, celebration, inspiration, or healing. We are not alone. The second reading is entitled Play by Stuart Brown, MD. Play is a state of mind that one has when absorbed in an activity that provides enjoyment and a suspension of a sense of time. 
and play is self-motivated, so you want to do it again and again. Our opening song this morning is We Are Marching in the Light of God, and we will do this two times, so please rise if you are able and have, sing the song. Thanks. Another definition of play is that it is purposeless, voluntary, fun, and an end in itself. And you may see evidence of that in this video clip Peter's going to play. I had to include something about the Olympics. <laughs> also, on the National Institute for Play website, it lists play personalities. You may have one main play personality, but likely have a bit of several of the play personalities. There are collectors, which is kind of self-evident, people that like to collect things. Those who like to compete, from Olympians to board games to whatever kind of game you like to play. Creators and artists, like the many artists we've displayed here at church over the last over a year now? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's been over a year now. But many other kinds of artists as well, singers, dancers, writers, actors. There's directors and planners, those who like to organize and plan, like me doing service. Explorers, both inner and outer worlds. There's jokers, again, kind of self-evident, people that like to tell jokes or play practical jokes. And those who like to move, like yoga, hike, and finally, storytellers. I'm hoping today we can all be storytellers for a bit. In Rachel Naomi Remen's book, Kitchen Table Wisdom, she writes, everybody is a story. When I was a child, people sat around kitchen tables and told their stories. Sitting around the table, or I'm going to say today, sitting in our church. Telling stories is not just a way of passing time. It's the way wisdom gets passed along. She goes on to say, in telling stories, we are telling each other the human story. Stories that touch us in this place of common humanness, awaken us and weave us together as a family once again. I want to start today with stories about how we play at Wash Park. 
I didn't prepare you for this one, so you're gonna have to wing it. What do you appreciate that we include in our time together to bring play into our services and into our gatherings? I love that we are always bringing in laughter. Anybody else? And I see Peter's ready with a mic. Can I? Thanks, Allison. Mm -hmm. She not only helps me prepare, she takes the mic. <laughs> um, I love how we are not bothered by children and their sounds and joy or even frustrations during the service. I love that um, for a long, long time we had children that would dance around our table at the beginning of service. I remember once we were gathering food under the table for Christmas and we had a child who was rolling soup back and forth with his parents during the service and we just, we loved that. We love, we love the playfulness of children. Thank you. Anybody else? I love the music we have because it, um, well, I can't s just stand still when the music gets going. I have to kind of sway back and forth. And the words mean a lot to me and I love music. Thank you, yeah, music is a great way to play. You know, I've really enjoyed the, um, the shift from a more traditional Christmas Eve service to the, the one where people could be um, geese or camels or, you know, we had lots of different Marys and Jesuses and, and what have you. And it was, it really brought um, a, a smile to my heart and, um, and I really look forward to being able to recreate that kind of joy in our new space. I like our kind of, uh, not always, but frequent irreverence. <laughs> I did this just to get Allison's steps for the day. So. <laughs> Um, it's not part of the service, but I like that we gather after mm -hmm. to, sh <laughs> to share in, in refreshments and just to be able to talk and catch up with each other and just share time and have mm -hmm. a little fun with each other. Yep, perfect. Yep, because any time we're together, we have fun. Is there anybody online that wants to share? Um, the Caring for Communities Working Group has uh, some play planned for our upcoming uh, and upcoming service this fall that uh, celebrates this space and what it's meant to us. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'm not going to give any hints just yet. <laughs> but you want to be here in person if you can for that event. Yeah, I will say that I have heard that uh, La Parade for a Day is going to be all about play and joy as well, so. Hopefully the we're not going to be talking about play, but we're going to be doing it. Yes, correct. <laughs> um, I, I love that we deal with really serious things. We care about serious things, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. While we do that, we remember that this is heavy stuff and we gotta laugh and we gotta play. So, thanks. I remember Bruce Ingalls, one of our past ministers, saying that we, we engage with the suffering, we engage with the hard work, we engage with the stuff, and we have a good time in the meantime. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Thank you.
Our next reading is from Archbishop Desmond Tutu from his book, The Book of Joy. Life is hard, you know, and laughter is how we come to terms with all the ironies and cruelties and uncertainties that we face. Sorry, I forgot to announce the song. I just was imagining things were just going to happen. <laughs> so, like Archbishop Desmond Tutu says, life is hard, but play helps us get through, whatever your play may be. I'd like to take this time in the service for folks to share stories of a time you used play to get through a difficult time. So that's what I was preparing you for. Hopefully people came with some stuff, but I'll start. Um, so back when I had breast cancer, I got this little bag. It was, I don't know if they, what it was, like a treat bag. It was a little gift bag of stuff. <laughs> it had a book in there about somebody that went through breast cancer and a couple other things. And then this adorable little frog that had a cute little white dress with a little white tutu on it and a pink ribbon and it was holding a um, wand that had a little pink ribbon on it and I, as I was diagnosed, I was like, I don't want to be cancer. So I was like, I'm going to play. Um, and so I decided that this frog was going to be part of my play. I named her Frida. And she came with me to appointments, and I just kind of left her in the car. She'd come with me every place. And I took pictures of her different places, like by the radiation machine and um, different things. So, and I was on Caring Bridge at the time um, through my treatment, and I wrote, um, I wrote about her and took some, put the pictures on there of her and wrote some other fun things as I went through treatment because, again, I wanted to play. So I told about some weird dream I had and put a poem on there and just did some different things. So that was my play through a hard time. Does anybody here or online have a story they want to share about playing through a hard time? Nope, just a second. <laughs> and, and I want to add that when I had breast cancer, Diane shared Frida with me. And I had her for my time during treatment too, so that's a joy shared is always fun. I've shared with you before that um, Pamela and I had the decision of employment in Dallas or um, unemployment in Colorado. And so we exiled ourselves to Dallas. But when I was able to get a job back in um, Colorado, Pamela and I um, did something, you know, unlike us. Um, we ended up going to Bruce Ingalls and asked whether or not we could hold um, a party in the uh, fellowship hall that was downstairs. And, um, and um, we wanted alcohol in the sacred space here and a, a DJ to be able to dance and um, have great music. And we challenged people to um, dress themselves in their favorite decade. And um, I remember Allison and Bruce came as hippies. Um, <laughs> Peter, came, Peter came as a, as a classic nerd. And um, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, Pamela, Pamela and I went, went some, some place and got some, uh, some costumes. Um, I think I was sort of Fred Astaire and she was not Ginger Rogers, but 
but she was very beautiful. And we just had a blast. We, we invited um, folks, we celebrated, we, um, we were so joyous at our ability not only to come back um, to, to Colorado, but to come back to Wash Park and to be able to share that then with, um, with our friends at Wash Park. And it was just a marvelous evening. Back when we were serving oh, parishes, um, you know, Peter and I would do a lot of funerals, and it was amazing at every one we did during the reception. People sitting around the table telling stories, and tables would erupt with laughter. And that's a good thing. My share is also about um, memorial services. I went to Oregon um, for the memorial service for two of my friends that we lost at Thanksgiving. Um, in May, and their kids had planned. Um, the first one was just a big party with some music and a keg of beer. And the second one, um, there was also music, but uh, there was a maypole in the afternoon <laughs> and <laughs> with a whole bunch of people dancing around, and they actually did create a maypole. And then um, People decorated, they had a bunch of those paper lanterns and people decorated them and at um, sunset there was a lantern walk with people singing through the neighborhood. So um, it was, it was very joyful. Anyone online? You were just waiting until I was at the other end. <laughs> Look this way. <laughs> okay, I'll walk over here. Um, going through a divorce was rough. Uh, thank God our church sponsored a divorce recovery group where we went and worked on our issues for a couple hours, but then afterwards, whoever wanted to, would go out to, to dinner together to grab a bite to eat, and then we went to the local citywide singles dance. Well, those are dangerous, but <laughs> as a group, we would dance literally in a circle. We would protect each other from getting hit on by <laughs> strangers and strange things and people, um, and it just helped us re-socialize because we had all been in these marriages and locked in and shut down for so long. And it was such a joyous time being able to dance and enjoy each other and laugh and feel safe within our circle because we protected each other. It was, it was great. With parents, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have a group of friends, then we've done political stuff for a lot of years, starting before that time when Hillary wasn't elected and the Orange Menace was. And um, we, 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 we were gathering weekly, monthly, we still do, and um, one of those in our group um, would often just challenge us and just sort of push us and annoy us. Um, <laughs> and he. Um, I started bringing duct tape to the meetings, <laughs> and that's what we named our group. We are duct tape. So. <laughs> Anyone else? Kathy's, but Kathy sort of reminded me that um, in these particularly difficult political times that we've now been in for years, um, Randy and I spend some time watching MSNBC and Rachel Maddow, and then we turn on Stephen Colbert, <laughs> or used to be Trevor Noah, to get the humor from it all, and it, it helps a lot. Amen. <laughs> so, um, through a very difficult pregnancy that all of you experienced with me, 
um, I joined um, a knitting and crochet group. And it was just for, you know, a couple hours on a Wednesday evening. Um, and it was just a group of primarily ladies. Um, we could bring kids if we wanted to. Um, but we would just sit around and talk about whatever and laugh or cry together if we needed to or, uh, you know, just anything. And it was a place where I had a brief reprieve from feeling so ill. Um, and it was, it was wonderful. And then um, one of the other things we did is while we were in the hospital after I was being induced is my family and I decided to play Cards Against Humanity. Which is great, um, because you're sitting in a hospital um, waiting for the inevitable and, um, you know, just something completely silly um, to take your mind off of the stress of what is. It looked like she wanted a turn. She was grabbing for the microphone. Does she have something to say? You have anything? No, you just, you just, just quiet. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you for all the sharing. And you're done with your job now. Well, I guess you can do the prayers thing too, sorry. <laughs> One more job, Allison. All right. So, I will remember this time. We are going to sing this little light of mine and this joy that I have. So please stand if you can and join in. Oh, it's number 524. You missed that.
our last reading is Joy is a Miracle by Alison Sautel. Joy is a miracle. Joy is a wonder. Joy is a gift of love and connection. Joy is holy ground that has been watered by tears and laughter, hope and hard work. Let us be a people of miracle and wonder, of love and connection. Let us be a people of joy. Joy is deep down reaching into your being and finding your own strength and the power of your love. Joy is courageous, reaching out and finding others and discovering your collective strength and the power of your love together. Joy is tr in truly knowing that all life is connected and in this web of life that is human, creature, land, water, air, rock, fire, seed, and stardust, we glimpse all of our, co our collective strength and the power of our love. Let us know the joy of connection to ourselves, our God, each other, and all creation. Um, I also want to bring your attention to the offering plate um, on the table in front of me. Uh, if you want to put checks or cash in there, that would be great. You can also donate at our website online. So our service here is ending. Let our service in the world continue. Okay, I know. Oops, am I on? Okay. I know we are a small group today, so people might feel self-conscious. <laughs> but I did hear some of you mention dance. So I'm hoping <laughs> that we'll get some people to join in. We are going to play our way out of the service today. We are going to dance. In your seats, I will take in your seats clapping along, trying some of the moves in the video if you want to come up here and try some of the moves. It will be, it won't be on YouTube because this song cannot be on YouTube, so that part of the recording will be out. So if you're dancing and worried about being seen, you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> so we're gonna try some of the moves in the video perhaps, or make up your own moves. Um, Andrea Gibson talked about waving her arms like an air traffic controller, so, you know, whatever goes. Um, so, let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> 